Now, plastic straws, cutlery and cotton buds could all be consigned to the dustbin, not just once, but forever. The EU is considering a ban on nearly all single-use plastics as part of a drive to cut pollution. There are currently over 150 million tonnes of plastic in the world's oceans, and if nothing is done, then by 2050, that could mean almost as many plastic bags and bottles as fish. Joining me now is Julian Kirby from Friends of the Earth and James Woodhausen, Professor of Forecasting and Innovation at London South Bank University. James, I want to start with you. Sounds like a good thing. What do you think? Well, uh, it sounds good, but I've got to say that the EU's record in real innovation rather than just regulation um, puts it in a very bad light. You know, if we're so ill from plastics in our food, why is our life expectancy going up? Uh, I'm 65. I'm likely to live another 20 years or so. That's rising. Um, we have some innovation in healthcare. We don't have enough. And I believe that it's around new technology rather than new laws that the EU might get a little bit more popular. It's very nice to uh, make a gesture, as Franz Timmermans, uh, the Dutch commissioner, has done today, saying that we need to get rid of cocktail stirrers and uh, cotton buds in our ears and so on. Actually, what Britain and the, even the EU does on that front in terms of plastics in the oceans is very small and it's really not hitting our health in any way like the alarmist manner uh, with which the issue has been raised. So I'd like to see fewer bans, more research and development, more clever use of plastics in cars, in aircraft, in appliances and uh, less hysteria about how we should all feel guilty just because we leave a plastic bottle on the beach. I might add that there's one Dutchman uh, who's just come up with a plastics innovation. It's a 2,000 feet high density welded polyethylene pipe, sits on the ocean, collects up the plastics. That's the kind of technological fix uh, that we need, not more finger wagging from the EU. OK, James is saying it's a token gesture. Julian, what do you think? Good afternoon. Um, well, I think you must have worked hard to find somebody who doesn't think that this would be a good idea to get plastic pollution out of the seas. Anyone who's seen the Blue Planet episodes or been following Sky's Ocean Rescue um, programme would see that uh, there is an enormous problem with the amount of plastic going into the seas, going into the terrestrial environment as well. We're only just waking up to the extent of that pollution crisis. And, and of course, we are absorbing it into our bodies. We don't know what that means yet. Uh, I've just walked up from the beach here where I am in the Gower, and, and just on the way up, I picked up um, a couple of items. Uh, cigarette butt here, um, sweet wrapper. Now, these are things that the uh, European Commission is proposing that the, the producers of these things will have to take much more responsibility for clearing up the mess that, that they make. And surely anybody would agree that that's a good thing. Um, it's also proposing banning some other products, as you mentioned just there, um, plastic cotton buds, plastic cutter cutlery and so on. That's, that's a really, really good thing. Um, so this is a positive day for cleaning up uh, the pollution, the plastic pollution that's in, in the environment. But of course, we do need to go much further uh, and look at other sources of plastic pollution as well, um, including even what's in our sun cream, what's in paint, what's in our clothes and car tyres and such like. But this is a good, good proposal. James, why are you shaking your head? Well, it's all motherhood and apple pie, really, isn't it? You know, who could be against cleaning up plastics? Well, I'm not a headbanger. Of course, we, you know, we, we need to do something... But you said you want less bans, James. Yeah, yeah, but bans isn't the way to do it. You see, a piece of... You think people are just going to accept to just... Not no, use cotton buds no, and plastic they're, they're in the not, check. They're not. They're not. But this isn't the front of the campaign. We've been campaigning, or you've been campaigning for this for quite a long time. How much difference is it making to people's behaviour, or are people actually rightly resentful of being told how they live in a throwaway, disposable, planned obsolescence society, and that they are? I mean, just looking around, just looking, you know, day to day. I don't think people, from what I've seen, are resentful they seem to be using a lot more if we look at coffee cups a lot more people are carrying um, reusable coffee cups around well it's wonderful you know but it doesn't solve the problem that we need uh, something better than what the EU and Brussels is, is giving what? us in what, terms James? of... I've already said it. Uh, we need more clean-up uh, technologies like the one I mentioned by Boyan Slat, the Dutchman with the polyethylene pipe. We need 
better public water fountains so that uh, people don't always have to carry stuff around with them. We need intervention, not at the level of intrusive uh, dictates to our personal lifestyles, but we need intervention from scientists and from technologists. See, if you look at the European Union, you'll find its research and development is below 2% of gross domestic product. It's behind China, behind uh, America, and we in Britain are especially behind. That's the debate that we never have about plastics, about innovation, about us uh, living longer because we're, you know, using the right kind of foods and so on. Medical innovation, technology innovation in general, materials innovation, cleaning up our oceans and beaches, that's what we need to do, not by fiat, not by issuing another missive from Brussels, but by actually getting down in the laboratory and doing something about this. That's a perspective that's entirely foreign to Greens, to Friends of the Earth uh, and to the European Union. They're not interested in forward movement. They're interested in stigmatizing us for our everyday lifestyles. And that isn't fair. It's not right. And it does create resentment. OK, Julian, what do you think? Do you think it's creating resentment? Do you think that the answer really is to put more money into R&D and less on um, banning people from doing things? It's absolutely right that we need to look at innovation for some of the trickier areas of plastics use, like car tyres, for example, or, or, or our clothes, many of which contain plastic, uh, in order to work out how to get the plastic out of those. So in that area, of course, James, James is right. He's talking um, interesting fantasy in most of the other respects, though. We, as Friends of the Earth, absolutely support innovation and, and are forward-looking. The public are absolutely behind looking at how we can get... Um, polluting plastic out of our lifestyles. The amount of people I speak to who are just fed up with plastic blowing into their gardens, they're, they're happy, really happy to see action being taken finally on, on getting rid of polluting plastic. So there's massive support because people care about the natural environment, because keep, people care about animals being horrifically harmed by these things. People recognise, as Friends of the Earth and all sorts of others, greeny or not, say, that we need a mixture of bans and innovation and, 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 and nudges, helpful things that help us to wean ourselves off plastic. I don't think people feel guilty about, about the plastic problem um, that we're in. People didn't realise the extent of it to begin with, um, but now we realise that it is a really bad thing. People are happy to move out of it and we're moving out together. And that's great. Julian, why did you describe what James was talking about, the innovation he was talking about, as interesting fantasy? No, well, I, I, I said that the innovation was a good thing. Um, the, the, I'd say what much of the rest of what he was talking about was, uh, was a mixture of, of fantasy and others. Let, let's take the, um, the, the example of um, uh, the, Dutch, the Dutchman who's proposing that he can suck um, plastic out of the sea. Now, now, that's a great idea on paper, but it just doesn't work. What that has suggested um, was that they, he can go out to where these, uh, the, the, the plastic is, is concentrated in, in the centre of oceans, the ocean gyres, and kind of hoover it up. But actually very little plastic is there. Most of it is on the seafloor or it's dissolved in the oceans or washing up on beaches. So that really wouldn't make any difference. And of course it'd be vastly expensive. The thing we need to do, the innovation we need to do, is work out how to get this polluting plastic out of our lives and replace it in ways that are kind to humans as well as the environment. OK, James, that example you gave, Julian, says it just wouldn't work. Well, it's great to hear Friends of the Earth talk about innovation because they generally don't. Of course, any innovation like the one I just mentioned is always too expensive, doesn't work. You know, we've got to change our, our lifestyles and so on. And it's just complete hypocrisy uh, from the Friends of the Earth who never backed even research and development on solar panels or, or uh, wind farms in a, in a serious manner. I think what we've got to understand uh, is that, you know, we're in a world where our router is supposed supposedly hacked by Russians where uh, everyday items uh, in the, like appliances in the kitchen and all these other things are all supposed to uh, damage the endocrine system. We're in a world where, uh, you know, basically the things that you eat, the, the, the car that you drive, the home that you live in, it's all infected, it's all dangerous, uh, and we've all got to be afraid of that. I would think that for Franz Timmermans and the EU, they might be just a little bit more exercised by the Italian crowd. Uh, right now than by plastic straws. I know, know that Franz Zimmermans is about to tell the Poles that they're going to lose the vote in the EU because he's judged them not democratic enough. It's really great to hear these people we've never heard of being so dictatorial on the wrong things like straws and telling Poland okay. what, what to do and okay, not taking seriously innovation. <laughs> let's stick to plastics. James Woodhausen, Julian Kirby, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you.
Merci.